Hi guys, I'm Madeline and today I'm going to be talking about prenatal drug testing. So let me just get my slides. So a little bit of background. Neonatal abstinence syndrome, also known as NAS, is defined as a postnatal drug withdrawal syndrome in which babies who are born to mothers that use addictive drugs during their pregnancy space. Neonatal abstinence syndrome can cause babies to have neurological disorders, gastrointestinal dysfunction, underdeveloped lungs, seizures, stroke, and an elevated risk of brain infarction at birth. The Center for Disease Control classifies opioid use disorder as a biological disease characterized by a problematic pattern of continued opioid misuse. According to the Center for Disease Control, the number of pregnant women with opioid use disorder at the time of labor and delivery has more than quadrupled from 1999 to 2014. In this figure, you'll see that these are some of the things that women use or do while it, pregnant and the number is in thousands and so a lot of times we only think of illicit drugs as being able to cause neonatal abstinence syndrome but one of the big causes is women using prescription medication without physician's order and so a lot of people during the opioid epidemic use prescription opioids, but they're not prescribed to them. And so that's a big problem right now for everyone. And so women's opinions about drug testing. In a web-based survey, 500 women were surveyed about their opinions of legal requirements for drug testing in prenatal care. 86% of the women stated they would support a law that required verbal screening of all pregnant patients. So that means that doctors could ask about drug use. And of those women that were tested, 73% of the women stated that they would support a law requiring universal drug screening. And the majority of women agreed that drug screening at prenatal appointments was acceptable if every woman who attended prenatal appointments had to do the same drug screening. By implementing universal drug testing, no one group of women would be targeted or discriminated against. And on this slide, you'll see that universal is in a different color. And I did this to really emphasize how important universality is because it allows women to not feel targeted or discriminated against. And so why does drug testing matter? Drug use in pregnant women has been known to lead to pregnancy complications such as miscarriages, preterm labor, low birth weight of the neonate, and an increased risk of postpartum hemorrhage. Women who use illicit drugs have a three times higher death rate during their pregnancy and delivery than women who aren't drug users. The majority of women who reported using illicit drugs using their during their pregnancies identified their drugs of choice as heroin and methamphetamine. With polysubstance drug abuse becoming the new normal, physicians simply asking about drug use is no longer sufficient in trying to help provide the best possible care for the mother and the fetus. So just by asking about drug use, they're not, the doctor's not going to know which drug is being used and different drugs affect developing infants differently. And so drug testing and pregnancy outcomes. In a study conducted by the Medical Center of Delaware, maternal and neonatal outcomes were compared among 166 randomly selected women who tested positive for one or more illicit drugs and 150 randomly chosen women who screened negative for any drug use. So the women were drug tested upon entry to the study. And 40% of the women who tested positive for drugs denied any sort of drug use even after a positive drug test. And so of the women, 60% of the 60 of women who admitted to drug use, 45% received help by their physician for their drug use. And women who received help and treatment reported a better relationship with their doctors and had better pregnancy outcomes than the women who denied their drug use or did not receive help from their doctors. And so by implementing drug testing at prenatal appointments, women can be open with their doctors about their drug use and receive the care that they need to have a healthy pregnancy without complications. And so the 40% of women who tested positive for drugs but denied it goes to show that just simply asking about drug use is not enough. And so how prenatal drug testing can save money in the long run. The average hospital stay for an infant exposed to drugs in utero receiving treatment is 21.1 days in a neonatal intensive care unit. 
So the average hospital bill for infants diagnosed with NAS is over $53,000 as of 2015. And that only includes the hospital stay and drug therapy. So if they need uh, surgery due to a developmental defect, that is not included in the 53,000. And so five out of every thousand babies born in the United States require some form of drug therapy in a hospital setting to mitigate the effects the drugs have on the infant. And so the most common forms of drug therapy for infants is morphine or methadone. And methadone is a synthetic opioid that's prescribed to help mitigate the effects of drugs. And so women are also prescribed this after labor. And by drug testing at prenatal appointments, doctors can provide maternal and fetal care to minimize the risks of the baby being born addicted to drugs and also reduce the need for a lengthy hospital stay because those can be very expensive and time consuming for the mother. And so in this figure, every 25 minutes a baby is born suffering from opioid withdrawal and you can see the difference in hospital stays, but also the cost difference of when a baby's born with NAS. And next to this, you can see a direct correlation of newborns suffering from opioid withdrawal and maternal opioid use. And so women who use drugs have a higher chance, a drastically higher chance of having a baby born addicted to the drug that they are using. And so mandatory drug testing can be harmful to women. And so in a study conducted at the Medical Center of Delaware, 14% of women said that mandatory drug testing would discourage them from seeking prenatal care. In the same study, 21% of the women said that they would be offended if their doctor asked them about drug use. And so that would just be a verbal drug screen. And so if drug testing is made mandatory, women who do use drugs may choose not to get the prenatal care they need during the course of their pregnancies. And women who use drugs are already at a higher risk for pregnancy complications, even when they receive adequate care. So if they're not getting adequate care, the risk of complications increases drastically. And several women in the study reported that drug testing would lead to problems in their personal lives because many women choose to keep their drug use a secret, especially during pregnancy. And so drug testing at prenatal appointments could expose their drug use to people in their lives. And drug testing can also be costly. So the cost of being pregnant and receiving adequate care can already be cumbersome without adding an additional test or cost on top of it. And so in a study done in California, women were asked about the largest barriers that they faced while being pregnant, using drugs, and obtaining prenatal care. And the number one answer among women, the number one answer among women said that lack of prenatal health care and the inability to afford health care was the number one barrier that they faced. And women on average attend 10 to 16 prenatal appointments over the course of their pregnancy. So drug testing at all of the appointments can add an additional cost and burden to women that they may not already be able to afford. And maternal drug testing can lead to maternal incarceration or mandatory drug testing, sorry. Physicians are required to report any positive drug tests, especially in pregnant mothers, and that's something that's a part of the oath that they take. But mandatory drug testing can lead pregnant mothers to become incarcerated and prosecuted for drug tests for a positive drug test before they have a chance to receive help. So in the state of Idaho, a drug test can lead women to be prosecuted and charged with child endangerment and child abuse because technically they are harming the baby when it's still developing. And so women risk having child protective services taking their babies from them due to drug testing at prenatal appointments, but also medications such as Subutex, which is an oral opioid used to treat women with opioid addiction, can show up on drug tests and it shows up as the same as heroin would. And so even if women are trying to get, are, are doing treatment or trying to get treatment for their drug addiction, they can still be prosecuted for it because standard tests, standard drug tests just show whether or not the substance or the drug class is present in the body. It doesn't actually tell you which drug it is. And so in, from all of the research, 
everyone agreed that universal drug testing at prenatal appointments eliminates any kind of biases. Clinics and prenatal appointments need to be a safe place for all women to be able to come and voice their concerns or fears, but it especially needs to be a safe place for women who are using drugs and may not have the support system they need during their pregnancy. And the health of pregnant mothers and their infants needs to be prioritized no matter what the circumstances are. And the safety of the mother and the infants are both important factors that need to be considered in prenatal care. And so my closing thoughts on this topic are mandatory drug testing should be carried out at a minimum of at least the first prenatal appointment. And if women have a positive drug test, then doctors can go from there and choose to routinely drug test women if they want. And women who seek prenatal care should not be prosecuted for admitting drug use to their physicians because prenatal drug testing should be about providing care for the mom and the fetus rather than getting justice. And medical facilities should be a place for all women to feel safe and heard no matter the circumstances. So if they are on drugs, it should be a safe place for them to discuss with their doctor their options. And so I included references from my paper and also from my presentation in case anybody has questions or wants more information. And several of the websites actually provide resources in case someone is in a situation where they need help or more information. So thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you have a great day.